Hello, uh, my name is Briggs Bomba. I am the project director for Trust Africa, uh, focusing on the illicit financial flows program, uh, as well as uh, the Zimbabwe Alliance uh, initiative. Uh, Trust Africa was established in 2006 uh, with a mission to strengthen African agency in solving uh, some of Africa's most pressing uh, challenges. Uh, the basic idea was to say that the solutions that were needed uh, for the continent were solutions that uh, were supposed to be context relevant. Uh, we could not uproot uh, solutions that had worked elsewhere, especially in the global north, whether they had worked in America, in uh, Europe, in Asia. Uh, our solutions had to reflect our own concrete, uh, you know, lived realities uh, and conditions. Uh, and from uh, Trust Africa's perspective, the only way to do that is to ensure that those who are affected uh, by a situation are in the forefront uh, of providing uh, solutions. <coughs> so, so Trust Africa uh, comes onto the stage uh, in 2006. Uh, and uh, you know is constituted as a pan-African uh, foundation, uh, playing a role of strengthening uh, those who are on the front lines uh, of finding you know solutions. Uh, and we identified three uh, focus areas. Uh, the first one being the issue of uh, economic uh, justice, uh, and basically the rationale for that was to say the continent is rich in terms of natural resources, in terms of human capital. Uh, we have every mineral that you can imagine. Uh, we have fertile lands, we have fresh water, we have fisheries. Uh, yet, uh, when you look at the reality of our people, uh, we have the lowest uh, figures in terms of the Human Development Index, uh, in terms of who is accessing education, who has quality uh, health care, uh, you know, who is living uh, long, um, so who is, and even the income uh, that our people have, it's a, you know, it's at the very bottom. So we realized that there was a great economic justice that was happening uh, where the continent is so rich and yet the people are so poor at the same time. Uh, and really for us, the, the issue is that there's ways in which the global economy is structured in such a way that there's a net outflow of wealth from the continent to the good, uh, developed world. So some of the work that we are doing under our economic justice program is work that is designed to stop illicit financial flows from the continent, uh, for example, so that uh, wealth that is generated here on the continent stays on the continent and contributes to the upliftment uh, you know, of people uh, on the continent. Uh, we've worked to ensure that you know, smallholder farmers become productive, they are protected, uh, they are innovative, and they are working in ways that are environmentally uh, sustainable. Uh, we have also worked to ensure that you know uh, there is you know uh, enterprises that are socially conscious uh, on the continent and that are contributing to the upliftment uh, of the continent. <coughs> so that's really you know our economic justice work, and in a very big way, we've also focused on tackling corruption uh, across the continent to make sure that there is a responsible use of public resources. Uh, our second major focus area is on democracy. Uh, we believe that the people must be at the center of the governance and political processes uh, on the continent. Uh, the reality tends to be that people are marginalized to the periphery. Uh, there's tokenistic consultations that happen once every five years, and after that, decisions are made without consulting the people, and yet they impact so severely uh, on people. So we've been working to make sure that uh, the space and opportunity for citizens to participate in democratic processes is opened up. There are no obstacles, uh, elections are free and fair, uh, and, and really that there is uh, increasingly, we are really looking at it as, as a question of increased direct participation, because there's also a way in which uh, we have uh, stretched representative democracy to um, apply where it shouldn't be. Uh, you know, very local decisions must be made on the basis of direct participation, yet we are, 
you know, leaving it to so-called elected representatives who then act in self-serving manners, uh, they end up, you know, not serving the community. So we are really pushing to make sure that every major decision, especially at a local level, is done through consultation, through people's participation. Uh, the third focus area for Trust Africa is on African philanthropy. Uh, and this is really um, an area where we are looking at nurturing African resources uh, as a way of, um, you know, uh, building the capacity for Africa to, you know, finance its own development. Uh, currently, you know, even the AU depends for maybe up, up to 70% of its, uh, you know, um, budget on uh, on donors. So we are saying there's a lot of wealth on the continent. Uh, we just need to nurture it, we need to manage it well, and we need to be very deliberate and very strategic about how we are approaching philanthropy. Uh, we've called it African philanthropy. So in that regard, Trust Africa was part of founding what's known as the African Philanthropy Network uh, today, and uh, we've produced you know several you know, books uh, including, uh, you know, uh, giving to help and helping to give. Uh, and we've done studies that are looking at, you know, uh, philanthropy across the continent and how it can uh, really play a role in financing development uh, on the continent. So that's an area that, um, you know, we continue, um, we continue to champion. As we move forward, uh, our focus is really going to remain on those uh, three areas. We're just going to deepen uh, what we are doing on those areas and obviously some of the issues that we are looking at now is particularly how do we build citizens movements uh, to stand behind the agendas that we are championing so we are really investing now in movement building uh, and ma making sure that you know uh, constituencies whether it's labor it's the faith community it's students uh, they are part of uh, the voices that are speaking on these issues uh, and they are part of shifting the balance of power uh, to ensure that there's political will uh, to bring about the changes that are needed uh, if we are to build in, in Africa that is better, you know, for everyone. So movement building. But secondly, we are also really investing uh, on uh, knowledge generation and knowledge management. So investing a lot uh, in research because uh, you need evidence and you need data to back, uh, you know, the different issues that uh, we are championing. <coughs> and in that regard, we've also... Uh, invested in creating uh, knowledge hubs, uh, you know, free access online knowledge hubs. So if we take for illicit financial flows, we have the largest, um, you know, knowledge database uh, with all the research articles, you know, various resources, knowledge resources on illicit financial flows. If you go online, uh, you can access that uh, via our website, you know, www.trustafrica.org. Um, and, and we are also really looking at strengthening uh, our work, especially on the extractives, uh, you know, the intersection uh, of, um, you know, fiscal uh, justice and the extractives, because that's where a lot of Africa's wealth is, uh, you know, when you hear people talking of Africans rising and Africa's GDP and all of this, most of it is coming from the extractive sector. So I really wanting to say, look, community benefits, uh, citizens' benefits, uh, should be the first priority in these issues and environmental sustainability should be a top priority uh, in these issues and uh, optimizing domestic resource mobilization should be a top priority uh, in how we are governing you know, our extractive sector and our natural resources. So that's going to be a very big <coughs> focus of our investments. Um, the other thing that I want to mention just in terms of our emerging priorities is really this issue of modeling uh, alternatives. Uh, so we are really looking at, you know, putting forward alternative economic models because we believe that part of the reason why the continent is struggling is because we've uh, swallowed hook, line and sinker uh, economic models that have been imposed from elsewhere. So we're looking at how do we model, you know, our own, uh, you know, alternatives that reflect uh, our reality. And uh, in closing, I just would like to appreciate, you know, the different partners that, that Trust Africa has worked with who have made our work possible. Uh, and this, you know, includes Ford Foundation, uh, particularly the West Africa office uh, of Ford Foundation. Uh, we have been a very strong partner in enabling Trust Africa to do this work. <coughs> it includes groups like Wallace Global Fund, uh, very progressive uh, you know, family foundation based in the United States. Uh, it includes uh, groups like, uh, you know, your MacArthur foundations, 
uh, ULED, it also includes, uh, you know, groups like uh, the Schooner Foundation, also very 